this and every man who watches can be honest women fall in love with the person they lose their virginity to or their second or third guy they really remember them they really love them da -da. any woman who slept with 50 dudes she doesn't even remember who most of them are she doesn't care if a woman slept with a bunch of men before you she's less likely to stick it out through a difficult period in a relationship she's more likely to just say you know what new answers new date that's a pretty I, good I, answer and that's the truth so why would i put myself in a position to no, be hurt no, not to be hurt to waste my time yeah like it's a time waste right and and it and it really is true because everyone denies this i'm telling you if a woman sleeps with a bunch of men her ability to pair bond that's a real thing. women who slept with a bunch of men they don't find a man and attach to him correctly does body count matter to you a guy's body count you know, unfortunately, there is a double standard. So I feel like for women, it's definitely different. I know, like, for me growing up, I had two older brothers, and there's always been a double standard in our home. So not that it's more acceptable for men to have more partners, but for some reason, it seems like it's not as bad for them to have multiple or more than, more than 10, you know? But if a woman does, people are usually in shock. Do you guys care about body count? Like, would you care if your woman was with 20 guys before you? Yes. Okay, so you, so here's but why. My question to you is, would you even ask her how many people she slept with? Like, do you want to know how many people your girlfriend has slept with? I've known. No, but does it matter if you're like, like hooking up with this girl? Are you going to be like, hold on. How many people have you had sex with right before you have sex with her? And not in. And you never met her and you're on her first date. Not in that. Like, you're not going to be like, shit, hold on. Let me ask her really quick. Wait, how many people have you had sex with? So if this girl had sex with 30 people, you would never know. Doesn't matter then, but I, but it'll come up, I think, at some point in the relationship. So you have sex with her, and then you're like, oh shit, you had sex with 30, so now I'm 31, like I'm done with No, it. it wouldn't be like, but I would just be like, man, like, I would just, my mind would start to wander, man. Like. So I see it more as, if you have more bodies, I probably won't take you as seriously as a person who had less. Why is that? Um... You've been with more people. It's like, I really don't want to be with someone who's been with 30 people. Like, if you have more bodies than me, that's kind of weird. Is it weird or is she more experienced than you? I think, <laughs> I think she's more experienced, but I don't necessarily want... I don't know. It's good short-term wise because she has more experience, but long-term... But what if she's changed? Like, what if she only wants to be with you now and she's had 30 counts? 30 now you 31 so what is it what difference does it make what difference does it make if you're really feeling the girl and you don't care and i mean like she never mentions it to you that she's been with 40 plus guys okay but it, but it's knowing it so i think if you know it i think it does do something to me at least like i would be like i would look at her differently not saying that i've ever been slept with 30 guys or 40 guys or anything but I'm just thinking for women that have, you know? Guy would look at them a little bit differently. But would you look at your guy friend differently if he told you, like, bro, I've been with, like, 20 girls? Kinda. So you would judge your guy friend for being with 20 girls? Yeah. I mean, it's not judge, but, like, I would just be, like, think of my paradigm of them would change. Like, maybe you should go get tested type of friend? Or, like, maybe you should wrap it up? Or maybe you should slow it down? Maybe you should slow it down. Like, yeah. I mean, all that other stuff is good, yes. But I think that's, like, the... Maybe they're just living life. Who knows? In summary, men should be very careful and picky about who they let into their inner circle, especially if it's on a long-term basis if they want to invite a woman into their lives. If you accept the appropriate lady into your life, she can significantly enhance it, add value, and complete it. She can if you invite the wrong woman in. She has the power to completely derail your entire life. So, while choosing who to include in your inner circle, be very picky. A lady should enhance your life, not be the center of attention. Work hard. Women don't care about your difficulties. At the finish line, they loiter and choose the winners. We're going to talk about female promiscuity and why it's important for men to pay attention to. Let's get started. In this video, I'm going to give some factual, cold, hard evidence to support why. The key factor is her capacity for developing strong pair bonds over time. And as her notch count increases, both men and women report significantly more relationship dissatisfaction. It's interesting that these numbers don't apply to guys. Men are born as nothing, which is the biggest distinction between them and women. We have to add value. We must acquire competency-based capabilities. In general, the world and people perceive men as objects of success. Women, however, are more highly regarded for their beauty, and I believe that is still valid. 
Women are valued because they take care of themselves, their appearance, and their notch count. Men, on the other hand, acquire it through the development of competent abilities. People will be upset as a result. Why must it be different? Why can't it apply to everyone equally? A clean slate. Equalism is not a thing. If you watch the entire video, I'll go into detail on why. I'll move over here to my computer screen. Over time, there have been much fewer reports of people having just one lifetime partner. You guys can Google it and find it. It was released in October of this year. However, these lines mainly show the number of lifetime partners by gender. Both genders you essentially had an 80% chance of marrying a virgin in the 1920s. It's reportedly at 45% today. If I'm being honest, I haven't encountered a female virgin since high school, so I'm not sure how true this info is. They are depending on reported statistics once more. Check out the sources of the information. The data that I'm going to show you after this will reflect the fact that, in my opinion, these numbers are probably quite a deal different. But let's suppose for the time being that this is the case. The number of males reporting getting married as virgins is actually increasing, which is an intriguing development. I believe that males are struggling. Men are definitely having trouble connecting with women in the market, as is well known. Numerous studies have been published on the subject. You guys can search for that. We can see that this has altered over time, and we may attribute this development to society's acceptance of more liberal terms and lifestyles. I would generally guess that from the 1960s or 1970s, women have started acting more like men. They have been advised to work harder and postpone having children and pursue further education. The feminine has been generally masculinized in society, as you can see, and we're simply following that trend. So it should come as no surprise that you will notice this. Now, how does that impact the capacity to form a long-lasting pair bond? And why do I warn the boys that it's a warning sign? Let's dive right in. The association between history and marital satisfaction can be shown in this next chart, which I'll show you. So once more, these are reported data. A woman who has only had one partner reports feeling happier in her marriage than a woman who has. Multiple partners in actuality, the line for women is very dissimilar from the line for men. Regardless of notch count, men often report higher levels of marital pleasure. There is, as you can even see over here at this point, a spread that is essentially 15%. It's crucial to remember that there is a relationship and it does get worse as the number of sensual partners rises. Once more, satisfaction ought to be high but isn't. It actually becomes worse as the number of partners rises, and since women perform significantly lower than males in this area, it appears to have a stronger impact on women. So that's one of the things a guy like you has to think about. There is a direct correlation between the age at which she lost her virginity and the number of partners, However, this relationship isn't explored in this study. I've seen it in another study conducted elsewhere. In essence, it appears as follows. If she was a young lady, let's say in her teens, and you met her at age 30, you both decide to be married, have a few children, and have a white picket fence, among other things. If she didn't have any committed long-term relationships and had her first experience when she was just in her teen years, for example, it is irrelevant. That woman has less worth to a male than a woman who held on to her virginity until she was 22 or early 20s and spent eight years in one committed relationship during that time before you met her and made the decision to be married and have children. She would essentially be a better option for a man who wanted to start a family. As the capacity for pair bonds declines, unhappiness rises. Okay, the increased reporting is what I want to talk about with you guys next. About personality disorders and notch count. Therefore, there are more reports of personality disorders and depression as female promiscuity rises. Substance usage has significantly increased. We discovered that the mean number of partners among positive participants was approximately double that of negative individuals when we used the BP Personality Scale Diagnostics Questionnaire to determine whether a participant had a borderline personality disorder. There you have it. 
Personality disorders and promiscuity go hand in hand. There was a high correlation between it and substance abuse, thus, abuse of drugs and alcohol, as well as interpersonal anxiety wrought on by potential failed sensual relationships, and specifically in women, it claims. Therefore, there is no clear association with men in particular, although it did surface frequently with women. Again, gentlemen, you can research all of these studies on your own. Use Google. So that's one of the other issues. I always advise guys to be very selective about who they invite into their inner circle. Before deciding whether to accept a lady into your life permanently, you should get to know her for at least a year or two. If you want to procreate with her, I don't think much of marriage. Your likelihood of getting divorced and finding yourself in an unpleasant relationship with a woman with a personality problem increases significantly if she is promiscuous. Such are the facts. These are actual events, not just my imagination. They contain facts. Studies have taught us certain things. You may choose two identical females. Female B woman who lost her virginity at an early age and has a higher notch count. If a guy has an option between two women, one of his female a whom has a very low notch count and also lost her virginity very late in life. The likelihood that female A will be happier than female B is noticeably higher. The likelihood of female B marrying or having a long-term relationship with someone who may have substance abuse problems, a personality condition, or otherwise be challenging to cope with in the long run is higher. The other issue with that is that women who have a promiscuous past are also more likely to be unable to maintain long-term faithfulness. They can leave and go on to the next relationship much more easily. If they have a past past, it's unlikely that they'll want to stay and complete the work or take ownership. One of the things that many guys find confusing is how frequently they want to ask women, how many people have you been with? If I'm being honest, I believe men tend to get that question first from women. I believe this is the case because they are attempting to determine your suitability for the position. It is essentially a test to determine whether you are knowledgeable about the position and who you are, if you like, in need, or desire. It's also rather intriguing because we try to judge one other's notch count. But when you start asking her for it, as far as women are concerned, she'll start giving you numbers. And typically, guys tend to exaggerate the number of notches they actually have. Women, on the other hand, frequently underestimate and let me explain why. Only longer-term connections are kept in mind, depending on personal experiences and facts, and similar things, things with some type of purpose. Additionally, there's a greater chance for guys that she was an alpha widower, which means she still harbored an unhealthy attachment or yearning for a man from her past who may have let her go. Leaving that aside, they won't typically discuss partnerships or sensuous activities, like friends with benefits trios or intimate meetings. These phrases, such as, what happens in Vegas, stays in Vegas, were first used by her on her summertime travels to Europe and Las Vegas. Therefore, you must accept that you won't get the whole truth and that trying to guess it will be challenging. One of the simplest methods is, before you met her, she had been in a committed relationship for 10 years, so there wasn't much else happening in her life. There was no traveling, no living in dorms with girls for five to seven years at a university, or something similar, and there were no frat parties, weekend getaways, or other activities of that nature. You can reasonably predict that the rate of unfaithfulness will be very low. On the other hand, she was a single person. She's been traveling since she was 38 when you first met her. Very little evidence of long-term relationships, or any complete absence of them, has ever been found for her in the past. You can pretty well predict that there will be a high level of promiscuity. It's therefore difficult for guys to evaluate. You should be able to estimate somewhere what the notch count might look like because you are aware of the coconut that is currently rolling around in your head. In summary, men should be very careful and picky about who they let into their inner circle especially if it's on a long-term basis if they want to invite a woman into their lives. She can actually, if you let the appropriate women in, live a better existence. She has some value to provide. She could provide value to your life. 
The wrong lady may completely derail your entire life if you let her in. So, while choosing who to include in your inner circle, be very picky. Without a doubt, you should check for promiscuity. In terms of long-term harm to men, there simply doesn't seem to be much of a correlation. In some of posts, many guys have even commented and assumed that women had dumped them because of their low-notch count. I believe that a man's desire for women and his experience with women are indicators of his fitness. In essence, it is social proof. It simply demonstrates your popularity and your worth as a man. With women, however, it appears to have direct correlations with a variety of factors, including personality disorders, poor levels of satisfaction, long-term relationships, and the inability to form close bonds with a partner over an extended length of time. 